from St. Joseph, Missouri. Here is Travis Lee Hartman. Travis, this is PG-13 here. It's America, Brandon. It's freedom of speech. You're right. We're allowed to say whatever we want because America. Welcome to the 20th episode of Weighing In with Travis Hartman. 20 episodes. Can you believe it? I cannot believe that these two clowns mm -hmm. have stuck together for 20 consecutive weeks. That's like, we, that's celebrated. We should celebrate that for okay, sure. Okay, well, I'm, you know, 20 weeks. we're celebrating right here, Dean. Um, we're on the, what, what would you say? Would you use the word, we're on the precipice of the masters that just happened today? I mean, we would could talk precipice? about that. Well, we'll talk about that later, but we're, I, but I, I just want to know about the that pinnacle. terminology. Pinnacle. However, oh. the problem with being at a pinnacle is then on the other side, you're about to tumble down and Okay. I mean, I hope we're still going up the mountainside to the tens of our followers and watchers we're or whatnot. Uh, they would be disappointed if, you know, we're peaking early. That's what she said. That is what she said. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, so I'm Brandon Waters. That over there is Travis Hartman. Thank you for joining us. For those that have been following along for these past 20 weeks or maybe you joined in midway through, thank you. Thank you for following, subscribing, wherever it is on YouTube, Facebook, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Spotify. Everywhere you want to hear us or watch us, we are there. Thank you so much. If you have not yet subscribed, please do so. If you're watching YouTube, right below us. Hit the subscribe button. Hit that little bell icon, and you'll be notified every time we update this channel. Thank you so much. And, of course, to our media partners. Don't forget See, my them. brain is firing already. I like it. To our media partners, TH Boxing, Gulfstream Financial, and IF Enterprises. Thank you so much for the resources and the time. So, with that, we can Trav, we are here. What's up, B-Money? What's up, man? Good it's, to see you. It's great to see you. It's been, yeah. it's been a good weekend. It has been, yeah. Tell me about it's it. It's been a positive weekend because I got to watch big boxing matches. Yes, that's right. Anytime that I get important big boxing matches on the weekend, I am a happy camper come Sunday when we record weighing in with Travis Harmon. This is, makes me so happy because we have stuff to talk about. So unless you're living under a rock, which if you are, that's cool too, uh, there was a big fight yesterday, which we've talked about it uh, here and there on different weeks. And uh, obviously we can Trav put up a, uh, um, a video the other day just uh, on predictions with regard to a big bout between Terrence Crawford and Kel Brook, which was just this past Saturday, depending on when you're listening or hearing us. Uh, so that was a big time one. We were looking forward to that. Uh, we have some things to talk about with regard to that fight and what it possibly can become or what it, where it might be going. Thanks. How'd I do my prediction, by the way? Half right. Your I future. The right listen, guy. the future is so bright. Weekend Trav's got to wear shades. There's a new sheriff in town, Brandon. Oh, boy. It's called Weekend Trav. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Um, so. I did get my prediction right. I said in my okay. prediction that I thought. Terrence Crawford would win this fight. I predicted a unanimous decision, mm -hmm. but I also put it in there that I believe that Terrence Crawford is coming out to make a statement in the welterweight division. I would not be surprised if he tried to knock Kelbrook out, and that's exactly what he did. And I'm going to tell you that Terrence Crawford does not surprise me. This guy has been on my number one pound-for-pound -pound list for a while now and he showed it last night because terrence crawford did to kel brook what no other fighter in the world has done and that includes triple g who fought kel brook that includes errol spence who fought kel brook while they both defeated kel brook terrence crawford did it faster than anybody in the world so to me it was impressive because kel brook is a tough guy and, 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 and those aren't just words. Those are Kel Brook's own words. Yes. Uh, Post-fight interview was that basically he was being goaded into answering a question about, you know, an upcoming potential fight for Terrence Crawford. Rather, he just basically said, listen, no one's ever done this to me in the ring before. Yeah. And Kel Brook's been around a long time. Yep. And he has a great record, and he's a big, he's a great big cat. He's got a win over Sean Porter. Not mm -hmm. very many people can say that. Sean Porter gave Errol Spence the best fight of his career, the hardest fight of his career. So... Kel Brook beat Sean Porter, and Sean Porter dang near gave uh, Errol Spence a run for his money. I wouldn't say he almost beat him, but he was 
the most competitive and best fight Errol Spence has been in yet was against Sean Porter. So that's that's Kell Brook's been in there with the with the best in the world, and he's held his own with the best in the world. Well, Terrence Crawford is a workout machine. Um, you know, if anyone follows his online content, his social media content, you see it. He is a gym rat. He uh, takes his job very very seriously. He does. And he is just an animal. I mean, he is such a, a, a physical specimen and so much talent, obviously being what most would consider the pound for pound, pound for pound best fighter in the world. Now, I want to pick that apart a little bit because your opinion, I think, should carry a little bit more weight. Because I want to talk uh, and ask you questions with regard to what you saw out of his performance versus Kell Brook, how he's ascended to the point he is mm-hmm. now, and then when you actually fought him. And so let's talk about differences there, what you've seen from a growth standpoint in him. And I'll just shut up. Get, uh, give us a little bit of description from back when you when you guys were actually in the ring together. Yeah, it's funny because when I fought Terrence Crawford, he was undefeated. I fought him back in 2008 or 2009, I believe. And the one thing I told everybody, I was like, it was the biggest punch that I'd ever fought. And I'd fought Keith Thurman, Chavez, Paez, Jesse, world champions, undefeated world champions. I fought them all. And they couldn't believe him when I told them that Terrence Crawford hit harder than anybody that I've ever faced. Amateur or professional 170 amateur fights that i've had i've had what 46 pro fights over 16 year span and terrence crawford still to this day is the hardest puncher that i've ever fought and this is why he's a hard puncher he doesn't have that crazy brute force he's a great pinpoint puncher Mm. his timing and his spacing is phenomenal and what I mean by that is, it's really funny because the w- when I say that, they actually mentioned that. Kel Brook mentioned that, and so did Terrence Crawford in his post-fight interview because it's true. And to see his growth, I'm going to be honest, I, I haven't really seen that much growth from when I fought Terrence Crawford to now. The, the only growth that he's had is he's beating top guys now, obviously. Yeah. But I'm not kidding. He still fought. He switches it up. He goes left-handed, right-handed. He's very good at that. He punches with power from both hands. And his timing and his speed and his space, his distance is amazing. And it was then. I really, and this is not even knocking on him because I just think that he's just perfected and worked even harder to do what he was already doing great early on in his career. And he still does it. So I don't really see a big difference. The fact, you know, the only difference probably is um, early in his career, he wasn't fighting 12-round title fights yet. Now he's doing that in these bigger title fights and he's learning how to um, adapt to fighters and implement a game plan early, meaning he was losing a couple of those early rounds to Cal Brook mm. because he was kind of trying to figure him out and try to figure out that spacing and that distance. And he wasn't figuring it out early. Cal Brook had a really good first round. Right. So once um, Terrence Crawford really started to get his uh, spacing down and, and started figuring Cal Brook out, that's when he started just pinpointing his punches because that one punch that actually ended up knocking Kelbrook down the first time it didn't knock him down he fell into the ropes Mm -hmm. which technically in boxing if the ropes keep you up it's considered a knockdown Mm -hmm. so they they gave him an a count because technically you're not supposed to get standing a counts in the pros but since the ropes held him up they gave him an a count but that was a perfectly timed right hand and it was like literally it was just perfectly timed counter in and perfectly timed on the button on the temple and just knocked him kind of silly. And his speed, he jumped in for two more. <laughs> yeah, and then he came <laughs> in that. when he was like kind of yeah. laying over on the rope. So yeah, it definitely helped. But Terrence Crawford, I just can't. The guy's so crazy athletic. The fact that he can switch right to left. And normally, what most people didn't notice, um, I think the average fan watching that fight was Terrence Crawford came out right handed. His last couple of fights, he's been left-handed for pretty much the entire fight. Hmm. He came out right-handed this fight and stayed right-handed for a good amount of time, which was, I I saw it too. I was like, oh, wow, that's actually a really smart move because I bet Kel Brook and them were like, hey, listen, his last couple of fights, he fought predominantly left-handed. So let's train for a lefty because I'm going to tell you right now as a pro fighter that when you have a guy that can switch like that, not only can he switch, he can switch fluidly. Yeah. And you can't tell a difference when yeah. he switches. So when a guy can do that, Brandon, how do you how do you bring in sparring partners for that? Because no, not very and that's why Terrence Crawford is great, and that's why he's on my pound for pound number one list because of that. He's got that um, that it factor, meaning there was guys like Floyd Mayweather who when you were fighting Floyd Mayweather you could not bring somebody in your training camp to be a sparring partner that can mimic Floyd Mayweather's speed, mm. his counter punching, and his just overall ability to win no matter what. So that's the hardest part because when you're training, what you try to do in sparring partners, you try to 
hire sparring partners that can cl as close as possible mimic who you're getting ready to fight. So you use that four to six weeks into a fight, you start sparring with these guys to give you a good look at what your opponent's going to be like. So guys like Terrence Crawford and a Floyd Mayweather, how do you do that? Because they are one in a million. Those fighters, you cannot find anywhere, period. It doesn't matter how much money your training camp has, you cannot find anybody that can fight like Terrence Crawford because Terrence Crawford is, is, is one of a kind, period. Mm. So he's got that playing for him. He's intelligent too. The kid's really intelligent. Um, he might not be school smart, so to speak, but the guy's ring IQ is through the roof, and that's why he's good because – He's like Floyd, and, and that regard is Floyd will lose a couple of rounds early because he's compiling data in his mind, figuring his opponent out. And if he has to give away a couple of rounds early, he's confident to know that it's okay. I got a game plan. I'm going to take these few rounds to figure this guy out. And then what's going to happen? He's going to unleash the fury because that's exactly what Terrence Crawford did to Cal Brook. He and, unleashed the fury. And to be fair, we don't know whether or not he is school smart or not. So I don't want to. No, agreed, agreed. <laughs> I, I'm just kidding. I'm I say kidding. that because he obviously never went to college. He never. Well, that doesn't mean someone's like school that. smart. Trust me, I went to college. It's funny. But school smart, it does mean that we don't know if he's school smart or not because he didn't go to college. But he could be extremely smart, which I think he actually is. But school smart, we don't know because he didn't go. Yeah. That's all I meant by it. Yeah, that's nothing, fine. nothing crazy. But he's a boxer, and that's kind of like the stereotype that I always try to fight for with boxers is because I, I just had a conversation with a business guy. Um, on, sun, on Saturday, and they were talking to me, and they're like, you're, you're a boxer? And I'm like, what do you mean by that? They're like, well, you speak really well. And I was just like, I kind of rolled my eyes a little bit. I'm like, it, that's kind of a backhanded compliment, but I was just like, listen, I was like, boxers are smart people. Like, I've literally been boxed since I was six years old. Like, I'm not stupid. I have a brain, even though most people are like, you have a brain, Travis, but you're in a living door. You get punched in the brain. I get it. I get it. Well, that's because they, ex they so. expect it. To, everyone's supposed to sound like Rocky and uh, and not like well, Apollo, Adrian, I and did not it. like Apollo Creed. I mean, it's 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 fair, but it's also people just need to be careful how they speak. Oh, of course, because but that's with everything, Trav. That's everything. I, yes, people. I mean, out there, it's we we live in such a, a crappy day and age where, especially online, people just feel like they could say whatever they want and get away with it. Well, no, you're actually people can see the way you respond to everybody and they kind of start creating their own judgments about you as a person, which yeah. is also equally unfair, uh, in my opinion. That's what I just hate the online chatter and stuff. Oh, the, Mike Tyson, I just posted this too, and I believe it was Mike Tyson that said it, but he, it, it's such an intelligent quote coming from Mike Tyson, who is a boxer, yeah. but he said that uh, people have gotten entirely too comfortable with disrespecting people online and not getting punched in the mouth. Absolutely. I'm not inciting violence. No. But what I'm trying to tell people is, if you were sitting right in front of me, and you disrespected me and name called me the way that you feel comfortable enough to do online, you might get smacked in the oh, face. Oh, I'm, I'm a choking <laughs> fool right there. But here's the deal is, I, I don't think those people would do that face-to-face. -face. And, and what I mean by that is, if you would not have the balls or... The I'd goal say too, yeah. to say that to somebody's face, then you should not say it. Yeah. Also, you should think about when you disrespect and name call somebody, how would you feel if somebody talked that way to you, your daughter, your wife, your kids, anybody? Because you probably wouldn't like it. So you probably shouldn't talk to somebody else that way, especially when somebody else hasn't disrespected you first. And that's me. You see this online. I don't disrespect people. Yeah. I have my opinions. Yeah. I do. But I don't do them in disrespectful ways. I believe certain things, and I believe certain values, and I speak on that. But I don't name call, and I don't get into that name calling. Yeah, no, social media has given people a, a crazy set of, uh, my, my mom would say back in the day, huevos, um, you know, eggs. You have no, you have no huevos. Uh, but, yeah, people have these, this set of online balls, and it makes me, you know, I'm just so tired of it. And that's still PG-13, right? Yeah. I we think, said balls. I mean, I think so. We can call them huevos, too, if you want to go there. No, I, I'd rather not because, okay. you know, they look at me and they're like, oh, he's Spanish. But then I say it. It doesn't sound too Spanish. Because I, no I, say, I say it like, no offense, I say it like a white guy. Huevos. So you say it like a gringo? Yeah. Uh, gr I, get, yeah. I get called a gringo. My, my in-law, my father-in-law, he has nicknames for all of his sons-in-law. And it's supposed to be kind of like partially derogatory. Yeah, yeah. And from day one, he's called me gringo. But aren't you brown? Yeah, so it doesn't make much sense, but he's stuck with it for many years. 
I know, I know. That's funny. So anyways, uh, so we went on a tangent, and we're still talking about Terrence Crawford, right? Yep. Okay, so, um, and we get, get, had a little information on how it was when you fought him. Yep. And then leading into Kell Brook, et cetera, et cetera. What's the future look like for Terrence Crawford? Yeah, that's where I'm going. Relax. I like it. I'm going there. I like it. I was reading your mind. Trust me. Trust okay. me. I was reading your mind. Well, that's where I'm going with it, is it Terrence me. Crawford it and that welterweight division. Yep. Okay? So we know there's been some jawing back and forth, quite some time, which kind of is, you know, loosely tied to what we were talking about. If you're going to jaw with somebody, especially online, you mm-hmm. better be able to back it up. Yep. These guys, these professional athletes, these boxers, they can do that all day long because they will. At yep. some point, they're leading up to something, right? And listen, I think what people think backing it up means, too, because both fighters leading up to this fight talk smack to each other. But well, That's part of it. But you don't have to win to back it up because Kell Brook, after this fight was over, Terrence Crawford massively respects him. Saw him in the back. They had a nice little exchange about how they respected each other. And Terrence Crawford even told him, he was like, bro, he's like, you got me early a couple of times. He's like, I knew I had to bring it. He's like, so see, I did. See, that's the beautiful thing about the fight game. Boxing, MMA, whatever it is, kickboxing, uh, Muay Thai. I love that. I love jawing back and forth leading up to the fights. And then you have like just whatever happens in the ring and it happens in the ring. But afterwards, the respect. Mm-hmm. Because let's be honest, what percentage of people on the planet are going to have, once again, the balls to walk into that cage, that ring, yep. whatever it is, and actually settle things like... Like men. Like men. But I don't want to disrespect because women are in the, in the sport, too, and they, they do their thing, too. Okay. But what I'm saying is that women who's, who's going to do that? Yeah. It takes a special type of person, and that's what you see across the board. It takes a special type of crazy. I'll say that for sure yeah. because I think we are a little bit crazy because I do participate in a sport where... There's a lot of violence. It's controlled violence, but sure. we do participate in a sport that is a little crazy. But like you said, it's so correct. There's no other – I have no more or bigger of a respect for a man than after I've done battle with him. Win, or, win lose, or draw, when I'm done with that fighter, there's not been – in my entire career, there has not been maybe one fighter that after I finished boxing him – all of my trash talk and ill feelings went away because I had massive respect because he came in there and he laid it on the line. I laid it on the line. That's massive respect. At the end of the day, you have that. And there's something inside us as, I don't want to say men, I'll say humans, that when somebody does battle with you, you know what you went through personally yeah. just to get to that point. And I realized that they went through that same stuff to get to me. It's, so it's that's so, massive. It's so interesting that you say that because any of my you know fights or altercations back in my prior days, obviously not in a ring setting, but once it's over, it's like different. The, it you is. have a respect level for them at that point. Maybe you might you might not like them, but you respect them. Yep. And, and that, that's what it is. And more often than not, you don't go back to the same method of combat anymore. Or if anything, you know you just see things. Not on the same wavelength, but on the same page. A little more clear. It's Things a little, little more clear, clear. right? Yep. And so I don't know if that's inherent in men, if it's just, I don't know what it is. Humans, I don't know. But the moment that you go toe-to-toe with somebody, and afterwards is different. Win, lose, or draw. It's different. Yep, it is. It's different. It's, I agree. It's and our primal instincts. This is why I tell everybody, and I'm going to stick by this, that I, I love boxing for that very reason, because even just not competing necessarily but i tell everybody one you should train because it's a phenomenal workout cardio wise everything else strength and conditioning everything boxing's phenomenal but if you want to take it even one step further i believe that you should spar headgear big gloves because you do i want you to you know what i i think we should start it's a rude awakening it is it is it's but it's it's also a it's a respect thing because I think more people in this world, I think even kids, and this is why I think boxing should be a part of school and should be a part of PE programs for this very reason, Brandon. There's rambunctious, angry, hateful kids out there, but I promise you, if you let me go in there and get these two kids that are just battling each other every day, fist fighting, I'm like, here, come here, guys. Put these gloves on, put a headgear on, step into this ring where it's a controlled environment, and I want these guys to spar. I will get these kids so tired and so... Um, respectful after that that here's the thing this is what makes you respect people too is you're just so darn tired that it gets the hate out of your heart because you're dead and that's what boxing will do to you and I promise you 95% of the people listening or 95% of the people that I tell that to 
they won't even last one round no. sparring, and they'll be that tired, and they're going to look and be like, you it's know, a different really sorry. So before we got on, and, and you were trying Facebook Live, but it kind of yeah, the phone, phone died. Off. So if you're listening to this, that's why. He didn't just cut you off if you were on there. It just his phone's horrible, and it cut off. Both well, of my phones. Well, you were asking me about the marathon thing. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I've, run, I've run seven. Now, they were all Jeez. seven years in a row, but it was the same race. It was Disney here, here in Orlando. Yeah. It sucked. Uh, cause I don't like running long distance, but at that time in my life, I was doing it. That version of cardio is not the same as that because in the same, during the same time period, I was still training. I was and we would spar here and there in the, in the old, uh, UFC gym. That is not the same. That cardio is yeah. totally different. I would be different pace, gassed right? yeah. after a minute or two gassed. And, and you ran a marathon, 26 and miles. And if you're going for, let's say you're doing a, a four corner drill or something like that, and you're having to go like four in a row. That sucked. That yeah. was not easy. And that, that's coming from somebody that is on, was on his feet 26 miles running. Yeah. Running. Oh, not consistently, but there was some walking there. But, yeah, but running. 26 miles, though. Yeah. But I would do – so, in, 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 in some of those years, I was, they do um, a situation where you can do all four races that week, and they do a 5K, 10K, half marathon, full marathon. Like I did them back all. back to back, right? Uh, every day. So Thursday, God bless your soul. Thursday you do the 5K, uh, Fridays at 10, and a half on Saturday, and full on Sunday. And you think I'm crazy for boxing? No, no, no. That's insane. So I would do that, and I was, tr- but my body was trained for that kind of punishment. Insane. It was not. Tra- it was not trained the same way to just hop in the ring and do- and do that sort of thing. So I have mad respects not only for you but boxers, MMA fighters, all that stuff because they're just conditioned and they are cut from a different cloth for sure. It definitely. I mean, but but. I want to go back to your point about the schools and, you know, trying, yeah, it'd be great, but there's way too many cupcake parents that want to, you know, delicately with white gloves, bring up their kids to be, you know, simpletons one day and be so a little delicate flowers when they're adults. I actually worry about what everything's going to look like in the next five or 10 years. Cause as, as these kids develop into teenagers and eventually people in, in the realm of business, whatever else, Jeez almighty. Yeah. What, what kind of culture are we going to live in where you can't say or do anything without, without uh, offending somebody? We're already seeing it now. Yeah. Every single thing we do in this, you know, this is probably offensive. Me talking about this is offensive. Yep. And someone wants to go, and, and they're trained to go cry to somebody. These kids who now are now adults are trained to go cry to somebody to go fix the problem for them. Because they're conditioned that way that they're allowed to do that. They see us it's doing it and they worse, see adults Travis, doing it. It's getting worse. You know what it is, Brandon? It's it's hundred percent. Is what I say is we're raising a bunch of beta males. Yeah. And we are. And don't get me wrong. We still need a a fair balance of beta and alphas in the world. It does. But we are raising a predominantly majority of betas. And you know what happens? Really, what happens? People just need to get a punch in the face. I, I said it, and I said it on my Facebook, and I, I believe it, and I don't mean this in ill will and hate, but. It does. It will change you. Get punched in the face one time. One time. I, you know what? Funny story. I don't know if I've told you before or not, but I got bullied. I was in third grade. Hmm. I'm a boxer. I, I was still a boxer when I was six years old. I'm in third grade. I think third grade is like, what, nine or ten, something like that, nine maybe. So there was this kid. I was small for my size. Like I, I grew late. I was a late bloomer. So I was really tiny for my size, and it was a kid who was literally, I would say, four to five inches taller than me, bigger, everything. I have no idea why, but he started bullying me, and he was big, and he mm-hmm. actually scared the crap out of me. Mm. I don't know if, like, maybe this girl that he liked ended up liking me. I don't oh, know. Come on. It come was on. third grade, come so on. I don't know. So, but, it, so he goes there. It, so, it must have been a girl I'm just like saying, him. Anyway, but, like, he really did, though. I swear to God, to this day, I have no clue why he started bullying me, but it came out of nowhere. Mm. I've known him since I was in kindergarten. We're in third grade. All of a sudden, he starts bullying me out of the blue. But long story short was... He followed me back into the, I, we were at recess. I forgot something in the classroom and asked the teacher if I go back and get it. I go back and get it. And next thing I, I look up and he's walking in there after me. He followed me in there because he knew we'd be alone. And he started coming after me. I, what do you do? I'm an alpha. You fight or flight. I ain't yeah. flighting. No. no way. I fought. So you know what I did? I punched him right in the face. Yeah. I literally, I was scared. I didn't want to hit him, but I was scared. Big guy coming at me. I said, uh, boom, punched him once, right? He stops. I didn't knock him out or anything like that because it was third grade. I, I didn't have that kind of power. He stops, looks at me, turns around and walks off. 
never bullied me again. And I'm, I'm not exaggerating. And to this day, I swear to God, I want to talk to this kid because I ended up going to school with him all the way to 12th grade. We graduated right. together right. at high school. So I want to ask him, like, why he bullied me. But my point is, we all need to get punched in the face because I guarantee you, I'm going to say it now because we'll get him on the show maybe. I want to be like, dude, that punch in the face woke you up, didn't it? He's like, yeah, probably changed my whole outlook on He's everything. He's a billionaire today because of you. Well, he is, he is a lawyer. Okay. He's a, a successful like corporate lawyer, I believe. So like, there you go. He, so, like, it changes you. So listen, we all be, need to get punched. It should be a rite of passage, right? You know, turning whatever age it is. You know, different cultures have different things. The quinceanera, they have all sorts of stuff yeah, in yeah. different cultures. That should be something. The, uh, and the punch, punch the kid in the face day, not a parent doing it, but another kid doing it. True. I don't know. There's a, there's a way. There's there's, there's a fine line there. I get what we're saying. Like no, no. we're not inciting violence, but like I do Just believe once. that all of us like we do. Like I don't know, man. Like Put a glove on, get punched in the face. Yeah, and by obviously somebody your size. So, like I said, I was I knew how to throw a punch that age, mm-hmm. but I was still small enough to where it takes a lot of pressure to knock somebody out or to really do oh, damage. Yeah, yeah. Like the kid didn't even have a black eye. See, he had nothing off, nothing. But it hit him enough. But to it where rocked him enough. It stung him a little bit. He was probably like, see what was oh, happening. Wow. More than likely, he was getting like verbally or physically abused at home or something crazy like that there's probably something unfortunately i don't know he had a really good family it does, no you see that but that's sometimes true, you don't true. know we what don't goes on really behind doors that it, unfortunate i don't know the statistics i don't have them in front of me but so many kids grew up in such terrible situations and you would never know it and and, and verbal abuse is horrible it's almost as bad as a physical abuse in many cases because it's psychological and a lot of these kids who end up being the bully is because there's something else is going on in the background. Most kids that are bullies aren't, don't wake up one day and say, eh, I'm just going to start picking on that kid. You don't think it could have been that his crush liked me instead? Jeez. Well, who would that have been? In He's a, got a really good family. You, I still believe that they're a like good ten, family. There's like 10 people Which in is class. why we would know if his family like, was bad. But you're right. No. There was, actually, we had four boys in our entire grade. The rest geez. were girls. No kidding. It was me, Jeff. Ben and Chris. Listen, I these are the guys' names. I'm not gonna say their last names because so I'll save them. I went to a small four of us. I went to a small private high school, and we graduated with 28 people. 15 over here. That's amazing. 10 were the, 10 were guys. 10, 10. I had four, and the rest was 11 women. Who who was best all around? A senior superlative. That was me, right Ay. here. Ay. <laughs> of course, I was. Did you guys do like? Did you guys? You guys obviously had like yearbooks and stuff yeah, like that, right? Of course. We had, yeah, we had the same thing. We had like they did a bunch of contests at the end of the year. The whole school would vote on, mm-hmm. like not just the seniors, like the whole school. You, could, as long as you were from ninth to twelfth grade, you could win the thing. Yeah. And it was like best dancer, worst driver, best eyes, most likely to succeed, like all of those things. It was pretty cool. I'm not gonna brag and tell you what I won, but I won a bunch of them. Come on. No. Nope. Come on. We can, we'll have to pop the yearbook out one of these days. I'm almost positive. In my, in I my, got best eyes, I'll tell you that for sure, though. Of course. Everyone talks about your blue eyes. I don't even They're notice natural. that. I know most people, that's the funniest thing. Most people don't notice that. Like, in person, when they talk to me, they don't notice it. But, like, I've known I you got for blue, years. I, I, don't, know. I don't talk about your eyes. <laughs> well, because you're a little guy, but. Well, yeah, but they can be dreamy Brandon, still. That's true. I mean, whatever. So, I think my high school also, I think my wife would have to correct me because she went to the same high school. I think the whole school voted for these senior superlative things. Yeah, but, you know, usually it's, they do. But yeah. we had to do some politicking, right? Oh, uh, you had to sell yourself. Well, no, I was a stud anyways, but, you know, hey. I did everything. I, I don't want to know harm, but... Doo, doo. What? I, I played sports all year long. I was <laughs> nice to everybody in every grade. Uh, I dated quite that's a few why, that's people. That's why we get along. I feel like we had similar upbringings, similar paths, and that's probably why we actually understand each other. Yeah. I feel like it's got to be because we have really good rapport here. I mean, I even uh, I went on a date with a teacher after I graduated. Okay, I never did that. No, we're not going to go through that. But anyway, so I was pulling that's strings illegal. everywhere. Pulling strings. Uh, oh, no. It's frowned upon. I think frowned after upon. they've graduated, you're right. After, it's frowned upon, I not illegal. I technically wasn't 18 yet either. Okay, that's, that's illegal. Yeah, but nothing happened. Okay, well, it's still a date, though. What? If, okay, let me, a little role reversal here. Okay. Okay. If once that was it, a again, male teacher. Once again, she doesn't watch. I, I invite her to watch all these things. She already knows this story anyway, so it's <laughs> if, fine. You don't have to say names, it's fine. But since a woman was doing it with the, the boy, it's not frowned upon. If a it male is. teacher was well, doing that with a female 17 year old, oh, yeah. end of the world. Oh, well, my high school has some of that. He's done. My high school has some of that. When I was a freshman, there was some, like, crazy stuff going on in that high school. And people getting busted for things and them trying to keep it hush-hush. That long ago, Brandon? We're talking about, like, 
way Dude, archaic age. Kind of, we're now, old, no, okay. see, the, the thing is, in today's day and age, you have the internet and social media and all these things. So that's why when teachers try to do this stuff now, they get busted right yeah, away. Yeah. And of course, the women that do it get glorified. They go on like barstool sports and other places, put up like their mug shot, and They're everyone's crazy. like, oh my gosh. You know, well, everyone, every guy says the same thing. How come no teachers look like that when I was in high school or whatever? It's a fair point. Yeah, but I don't know where I was going with this. I don't either, but we just went on another tangent. Best all around. Best all around. Best I can all see around. It. I can see it. Okay. With your handsome beard coming I back. didn't have a full beard at that point. I was only starting to get some uh, goatee-ish facial hair, and Brandon, I had sideburns. I, had sideburns. I didn't grow my first beard until I was 34 years old. I was so excited. I didn't know I could. I was so excited when I can get sideburns that went, like, down the length of my yeah, ear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, fun fact, I was a big 90210 fan back in the day. Oh, dear Lord. Oh, please. You never watched that? I, perfectly honest, I watched it, wasn't a fan. I was a Saved by the Bell guy. I love Saved by the Bell. Don't get me I wrong. I never got into 902. But they never let the Saved by the Bell guys have facial hair. Think about it. That's why I liked Zach. He was such a baby-faced... He's a baby-faced assassin. If he was a boxer, that's what I would have called him. Actually, no. I would have called Mario Lopez that. Because he's still he's got a baby stud. face. Dude's a stud this to this st- day. He's my... I'm, we I'm gonna, we talked about him one episode I know. before. I'm going to be truthful. This guy's like... Low key, but not high key. No, he's our man crush. He's my idol, That's dude. Okay. That's no, my idol. call it, call it what it is. Okay, man crush. It's a man but crush. I want to be like him. Yeah. This guy's phenomenal shape. Family married, dude. great family guy. Loves his children. I mean, listen. Again, I'm speaking from the outside looking in, like obviously. But he, he genuinely, when you watch him with his family, you see some genuine love there. Like well, I also, feel like he supports them, loves them. Like they, they're together. Looks, I like it. And this isn't like stretching. He looks like he is about to go suit up for Bayside High. Uh, yeah. On the wrestling team, I think Still. there's like a is there there's a new something coming out that he's on. They had it on NBC's like inter, uh, what, what, they called it the um, Peacock or something like that. Yeah, something's out. So they have this show. It's supposed it. to be Saved by the Bell. He, I think he and Jesse Spano work for the high school. Yeah, okay. there's a random. Like, okay, I think. So Zach is like I'm gonna steal some, some sort of a politician for California or something stupid like oh, that. Um, and like. They have the various, like, teenage characters that are supposed to be, like, here's a heartthrob, here's, like, the chick everyone wants to date. Kind of like they have Another fun fact, the chick everyone wants to date is supposedly a transgender in real life. It is, actually. Okay, let's go back to boxing Okay, so, anyways. Before this goes on a Yeah, because Mario Lopez got in trouble for some comments from his past about about that. Anyways, anyways. um, Best all around. We digress. That's where I was. Best all all around. This guy. And how now we're going to talk about how... Terrence Crawford has been trying his absolute best for a long time to get a marquee big-time fight. I love how you're doing producer work for me. <laughs> I love it. That's the second time. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't trying to do that. I, was okay. just... I have my notes here, and he's, like, reading upside down. It's like, oh, well, I, we're going to start talking about this now. You, you want to know the truth, though, is I, it's not a man crush. It's massive respect, though, because I know what it takes to get to where he's at, and Terrence Crawford just impresses me. I mean, the guy really does. And I don't think, genuinely, I don't think he gets the credit he deserves because he's the number one pound-for-pound pound guy in the world, right? You have guys like uh, Lomachenko. You have guys like Canal Alvarez, who I, all, I consider, they were my top three at one time, mm. was uh, Terrence Crawford, Lomachenko, Canal Alvarez. I have Canal Alvarez at number two now, mm. but Canal Alvarez makes a massive amount of more money yeah. than Terrence Crawford, and that's because Canal's had blockbuster fights. Terrence Crawford hasn't been able to get in the ring with somebody who is a massive figure like a Manny Pacquiao so, or Errol Spence well, or guys like that. Then. So, so do you blame – it's not on him, obviously. Do you blame the management team around him for that? I mean, I wouldn't there, – there's not blame, but I would say that it's but, very tough to promote a guy like Terrence Crawford, meaning Terrence Crawford is not commercial sure. marketing-wise. Yeah. And – I consider him great. He's super talented. Most guys that are that good as well, they don't want to take the risk at fighting a guy like Terrence Crawford because, one, they're probably not going to make the most money they've ever made in their career fighting him. But yet, they're probably going to lose. So the risk and the reward there, yeah. it's not – most people don't want to take it. But he's won for so long now that if he doesn't get a big fight in 2021, I will lobby for him to fire Bob Aaron, which is a promoter, his managers, all of them, because they have failed him. If, yeah. in, if, if, and I'm saying this, if, if in 2021, T 
Terrence Crawford doesn't fight Errol Spence or a Manny Pacquiao type of fighter, then yes, his management and promotion team has failed him. I don't, I'm not going to say up to this point to have because Terrence Crawford's making multi-millions still. Yeah. Okay? Last night, I believe Kell Brook made 2 or $3 million. And you know Crawford made more than that because he was the marquee fighter there. Right. So I think that up to this point, you could say that his promotion and, his, uh, promo- his promotion and management team um, have maybe delayed his big-time fight a little bit. But they've been trying. They tried to get a Pacquiao fight a couple of years ago. They've been, Terrence Crawford met up with Errol Spence in the back and was just like, hey, we need to fight, you know, and yeah. there's video of that. So yeah. he's tried, but the fact is, yeah, maybe his promotion team, if, and I'm giving him leeway because if Terrence Crawford does not get that big time fight in 2021, and the only fight I will accept as big time is a Pacquiao fight or an Errol Spence fight. If he does not get either of those guys in 2021, then I 100% will be calling and texting Terrence Crawford and telling him, Terrence, bro, you got to figure something out because they're not helping right now. But they're they're so far. I, I could say that it's it's just been tough because of his talent. But he should get it in twenty twenty one. Well, it feels it feels as if, and we've talked about this at length a bit. It feels as if they want that Errol Spence fight, and obviously Errol Spence fights Danny Garcia here on December fifth. Yep. And he's uh, got to beat him. Assuming that outcome, right? So that's yep. not exactly a cakewalk for Errol Spence. But it feels as if. That's the lead up. That's the build up to what could be one of those blockbuster fights in 2021 we talked about last 100%. week. There's a few things that, that are starting to set up. The stars are aligning for it. Um, but, but you make valid, valid points of the fact that these fighters have to be marketable too on their own. So when you look at some of these primetime names that we've talked about, you talked about Lomachenko. He's kind of like that silent Eastern European. He, he fits that mold, yeah, yeah. right? You got now Teofimo Lope or Teofimo, uh, gosh, what Lopez. I? Yeah, I missed yeah. my mind. Yeah. My no, brain you were fart. right, though. But you were right, though. Because I was yeah. thinking about saying his first name right because yeah. I messed up the, the other one. You were good. Um, so he's starting to talk more good because he needs, he needs to start. You might doing not that. like it, no, but you're but listening. He's marketing though. himself. And you get some of these other. Deontay Wilder, for all of his shortcomings, you know. He's finally actually interesting. Yeah. He in was, a negative way. Yeah. But, but we're he was marketable. About him. He's marketable. Tyson Fury obviously is marketable. Oh. All these guys, Canelo, marketable. So and not just because of their talent, but because of the the extra something. Yeah. That personality it's a, it's factor. A, it's the it factor. Yeah. You gotta have it. Yeah, so there's it's a little love hate there. You gotta yeah. have it. Now, but but then it, let's say Errol Spence beats Danny Garcia. Okay, and let's say everything lines up and it's Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence. Yep. Marketing-wise, obviously two great fighters. I mean, that's a fight you want to see. Yep. But are they verbally carrying this thing? I mean, how, how, both of them? They're not. Neither of them are exactly wordsmiths coming uh, out. I mean, if you've ever heard Terrence Crawford talk smack, this dude no, can I talk have. some mean smack. But, and he's the one that's carried a lot of these recent but once fights. Once again, it's, but, it's personality. It's got to exude out, yeah, yeah. right? It's got to. It's not. It's pulling us. Mm-hmm. But you got to pull the random sports fan, too. Well, th- and this is where I think your promotion comes in because Terrence Crawford has the it factor. He actually has the talk. He's got the same um, confidence and bravado as the Mayweathers. As So I- I'm going to say this. I'm not comparing him to this guy, but Ali. Terrence Crawford's that confident. Sure. He's that confident when he plays somebody in air hockey. He's that confident when he plays somebody in golf. He's just got the confidence. And – it exudes in his trash talking. Terrence Crawford's a great trash talker. And then that's why I think he has But been, you don't see it enough, right? You problem. don't even see so it enough. So that's the problem then, Travis. I don't think he's been Promotion. promoted the right way. His PR needs to step their mother effing game up. Yeah. Because Terrence Crawford is marketable. The only Terrence one. Crawford, you're, bro, Here's you need to watch. You're marketable, bro. Here's who's doing the work. It's everyone ranking the best pound for pound fighters out there. It's not the promotion. It's like. I mean, obviously, I know they're loosely related to ESPN, but it's like the ESPN boxing analysts are ranking them. Fox Sports analysts, they're ranking them. They're doing the work for them. Yeah. Imagine if there was that extra push from the promotion behind him, catapulting him to the status of – Canelo is different because he's pulling like a whole country and yeah, that's yeah. a ton of boxing fans. But giving him that platform, yeah. his, promotion, his promotion behind him is failing him, my well, opinion, yeah. failing him. But think about this, though. Think about this. How many people just tuned in because it was randomly on ESPN this weekend and I didn't mean, know it, the fight was on? Probably a lot. But, but listen, they're not completely failing him because 
they're only able to pay Terrence Crawford multi millions if people are tuning in. So they are. So therefore, you can't really but say they're feeling but it's that a, it's much. A, it's a chicken and an egg thing, then, because they would more would tune in if it was if he was promoted better. Yeah, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty for sure, and I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you if in twenty twenty one he doesn't get that big fight because Bob Arum is notorious for Bob Arum has been a in all of his faults, a pretty good promoter. Well, he he promoted the it. crap out of Juan right. Marquez, Manny Pacquiao, and they fought, what, four or five times. And I hated him the last time he promoted Pacquiao versus Marquez. And what ended up happening? Marquez but, knocked Pacquiao but out. What if but that, I hated him but for But what that. if that didn't happen? Well, he's got, a, he's got a track record of a lot of good fights still. Sure. He does. But, no, yeah, you're right. What if? Yeah. What if it didn't happen? What if it was the same fight as the previous, like, three or four? It would have been just we knew it was going to happen. It was a razor-thin fight, razor-close razor, razor close decisions. Nobody knew. But it didn't. Bob Arum put Marquez and Pacquiao in a place to succeed. Dude, so I've, I've hopefully seen more, he can do that with, I've Pac, seen with more, uh, Crawford. I've seen more in the past week or so, two weeks, call it the last two weeks on social media. I've seen more of Ryan Garcia – working out with Canelo rather than the lead-up to Terrence Crawford. Wait, wait. Say that again. Ryan Garcia. Yeah, yeah. I've seen, I've seen more in the last yeah. two weeks of him training like in Canelo's camp well, listen, rather than the actual fight about to take place with Terrence Crawford and Kelbrook. Whose fault is that? Nobody's because I'm, – I'm, and I'm a heart – look, I used to do a radio show for 10-plus years out of California, mm-hmm. and I have been, and if you go back and you listen to episodes on the Ringside Boxing Show of me being a harsh critic of Bob Arum and his promoting, sure. I have been. However, you're bringing up something because you made a good point earlier about Canel Alvarez and his following. He's got a whole country behind him. Mm-hmm. Ryan Garcia is a Mexican-American as sure. well. Okay, This kid took uh, social media by storm. He's got 7.5 million Instagram followers alone just on Instagram, not to mention all the other um, avenues that he's on. He's on Twitter. He's on everywhere else too. But he's got a whole country behind him. It's very easy. Not easy. You have to be good. Mexicans want you to be good too. They'll follow you when you're good. But he has that behind him. Promoters don't really have to do much for a Mexican fighter. Well, They it, put them on TV and they flock to them. But, it, but in his case, we're, they're showcasing a lot of what he's impressive with. His, I mean, his hand speed is ridiculous. It's lightning. Yeah, and putting like seeing little clip it little clip videos on an Instagram. But he doesn't. Like but that. that's him. He does self promotion. No, 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 no. But other channels doing it too. It's not just him. But it's not his promoter doing it. But they got, they pull strings too. I mean, listen, if if Bob Arum has this talent, who is the pound for pound best fighter in the world? It has been for a bit. Wouldn't you think that's the guy that should be in commercials, in social media, and all this stuff? If he is as fluid of a trash talker as you say he is, or just you know on the mic. Don't you think he should get that mic time somehow? Especially with the relationship with ESPN. Don't you think? If he had me helping hmm. his promotion team, well, of course. Well, text he him right would now. have that. Text him right now. Deal. We're I'm actually talking about legit going to text him. I'm not even kidding. Yeah. I'm going to text him. So carry, carry our conversation. But let's talk about Terrence Well, Crawford. let's talk. Okay. And this kid's competitive, and he needs to have a push-up contest versus you as well. Uh, first of all, right now, I'm that, I, would, I would lose in two seconds because I don't have the, the near the endurance uh, based on this whole Speaking of thing. which, Terrence's manager and coach, Brian McIntyre, follows our Instagram page, weighing in with Travis Hartman. I'm going to pull some strings. We're getting him on here. Okay, so that makes that's a good segue. Why aren't you all following that page? Weighing in with Travis Hartman. It's on Instagram. You should follow that. You should also follow Weighing in with Travis Hartman on YouTube. You know, we're on Spotify and all that too. Actually, you know what, Trav? We're coming up close to a, a good midway point for a break. I do want to jump in after break. Let's talk about the lead up of the potential. The potential in the welterweight division. Now we have Terrence Crawford, got through Pakel Brook. Pretty easily. I mean, yes, the first couple rounds. Me, I just whatever. text Terrence Crawford. Okay. There we go. It'd be cool if he replies while we're on the air. It would be. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a break here. We're going to talk Terrence Crawford and possibly Errol Spence. But Errol Spence has to get through Danny Garcia. Thank you once again to those that have subscribed to us, any of our social media partners or media partners, TH Boxing, Gulfstream Financial, and IF Enterprises. And to all of you out there, we love you all. If you are not following or subscribing to our content already, uh, what are you waiting for? Look at he's got those baby blue eyes. It's hard, yeah. And the pouty face. And the pouty face. And the American hat, USA. Love America. Love America. We love you guys. We'll be back in just a few moments.
So anyways, we're back. Thanks for waiting the, the few second pause for us. So we're back, and we're drinking today. Sorry. Well, it's in, you're having a black sleeve on. They can't see that. I know. I mean, you can kind of see. There's a little, you can see a little bit You still. can't even see anything. Okay. That's it. Good Lord. Go ahead. You go ahead. I'm going to take my shirt off, though. Okay, so we're drinking Tin Cup. Uh, tin Cup is, I believe it's a blend. Oh, my gosh. Sorry, we're in. You're just like, look at, you can barely even see you. <laughs> look at that on the camera. I just angle. got a smile so you can see the white teeth. I just want to barely see the muscles now. I'm getting buff now. Guys, I'm getting buff. You're watching the transformation right before your very eyes. Look at 17, 18, 19, now 20. Okay, sorry. Tin cup. I'm bringing it. Drinking tin cup. Uh, it looks to be a blend, I believe, from between Colorado and Indiana, okay? And uh, I don't know, it's... It's pretty good. I mean, it's not like super smooth by any means, but it depends on what you want, your palate. A uh, little bite, not a big deal. Price point is pretty inexpensive. What do you say, like 30 bucks? Terrence Crawford just texted me back and said thanks, by the way. But go ahead. Sorry. Man. <laughs> You're stealing all my thunder. Pound for pound, welterweight champion of the world. Text me while we're on the air. But I'm sorry, Brandon. I'm, I'm gonna, Tin cup. I'm going to go quit. Back. I'm no, quitting. Go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You've taken my producer role <laughs> several times tonight, and I'm trying to get into the next part of our thing where we always Listen, talk about the bourbon. you punched me on air one time, so this is my get back, You're about I guess. to get punched for a second time. <laughs> a second sorry. time on I'm air. I'm sorry. I should have shut up. No, it's fine. Are we able to show the camera that, or does it show his number? No, it, it just says his name. It doesn't show his number. You can put it on where, any of the cameras. Which one? You put, they're not going to see that. They might see mine. I'm doing yours. Okay, fine. Okay. <laughs> there it is, Terrence Crawford. Thanks, man. Okay. Love you, Terrence. Um, tin cup bourbon. It's a blend. It's, it's good. Uh, we're going to rank it. We do the uh, one out of ten boxing gloves. Do you know your ranking right now? Yeah, I think so. I'm still drinking it. Like last week, we had a tough time because the Woodenville wasn't very good. Yeah, I don't know what it was. Like, I don't know what it, just it was. Didn't, about, it it just, wasn't my palate. It wasn't mine either. But That's this, the is, thing. this is good, and, and it's actually growing on me. The more I've had of it, which, I know. What a shock! The more I drink, it tastes better. The oh. more I drink, the more I drink. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna give this a six three. Six three. Not bad. Yeah, not bad. I'm I'm gonna go above that actually. Okay. Wow. Okay. I'm gonna give it a six point nine. 6.9. <laughs> Seriously. No pass. reason yeah. for that number. I wanted to give it a 7, but I'm going to give it a 6.9. Well, thank you. thankfully for the, the sensors of this program, that averages to a 6.6. 6.6 <laughs> 6. 6 is what we're giving this 10 cup American whiskey. It's a blend between a, um, a high rye bourbon out of Indiana as well as something in Colorado. So take that for what it's worth, but it's all right. And on top of that, look at this little thing. Actually, you can hear it. That is not what she said. It comes with a tin cup, which I think we got this out of respect and, uh, and um, I don't know, applause for the Masters, correct? Yes, sir. That, so the Masters, I'm not like a huge golf watcher, but I'm a huge golfer. I love golfing. And when I was buying this at ABC Liquor, I was like, oh, my gosh, tin cup. You know the movie with Kevin Costner, tin cups, the golf movie? Yep. I felt like... Our episode today should be a little bit golf themed, so I got ten cup, and wasn't a bad choice, right? Like, no, I'm it's, it, it was. I hundred percent. Maybe next year, I'll buy it again for the Masters. Okay, but that's about it. Okay, well there we go. It's so not that, bad though. It's actually going down pretty decent. No, it's 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 what she said. It's going. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I really almost spit. That genuinely almost happened. Yeah. Not even exaggerating. So uh, let's let's move away from the bourbon segment of this show. But if you, if you're interested in getting it, it's pretty good. Six point six average boxing gloves rating from us. So before the break, we had mentioned discussing the uh, welterweight division a bit. You know, we have Terrence Crawford coming off the big win against Kell Brook, which I don't think that was necessarily unexpected, but he definitely showcased his skill level, finished him, Yep. which I think it, it did, I want to say it surprised a lot of people, but it raised our eyebrows like we're like, finally, that's happening. Uh, but now we shift our eyes to the bout, the bout on December 5th. We have Errol Spence and Danny Garcia. It just feels to me, and we talked about it all the time, it's, that lead up there for 2021, it, it's right there. Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence. That's who the boxing fans want to see fight. 
Errol Spence yep. has to get through Danny Garcia first. Not a small order. Um, but I did want to pick your brain about that as we get closer to December 5th. Yep. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking a bit more about Tyson and Jones Jr. And then literally the week after that is this fight. Boxing's phenomenal. Do I have to say it again that literally the last half of 2020 has been phenomenal mm. for boxing? Like literally phenomenal. So I, I, I'm not kidding. I can't stress this enough. And it's been on – we've had one pay-per-view show. The rest of it has been on regular yeah. televised stuff. So like – and it's delivered. We've had great fights from women fights to men's – like we've had amazing fights. Boxing is – people always tell me this stuff. They're like – I've talked to a couple older guys – and when I say older, I'm like 60s. Um, about, I'm like, hey, do you guys follow boxing? You know, they're like, ah, oh, you know, I really don't follow it anymore. I feel like it's kind of going down. I look at them, I'm like, just because you don't follow it doesn't mean it's not going down. I promise you, boxing is the highest rated it's been in a very long time. And the trajectory the last eight years of boxing is up. Okay, yeah. these guys are make. listen, Canelo Alvarez signed a five-year, $365 million deal with DAZN. And after two years... He wasn't happy with the money. Hmm. So what does that tell you? That there's even more money to be made. So people are watching boxing. Yeah. It's yeah. popular. So well, let's talk about Errol Spence and Danny Garcia. Um, I, I don't want to spend the whole show, the whole last half on this, but the expectation from most people is that Errol Spence wins. Is mm -hmm. that also what you're seeing from your analytical hat? So listen, before Errol Spence got in his really bad car wreck over mm -hmm. a year ago, it was in October of 2019, I believe, is when he got into the car wreck. Um, before his car wreck, he dismantles, in my opinion, and eventually knocks out Danny Garcia. Mm -hmm. That is my 100%. 100% Errol Spence does that. However, this is Errol Spence's first fight back post his car wreck. And he's choosing a multi-world champion in Danny Garcia. So hats off to him. He is what is right and good about boxing for the average fan, meaning he fights the best, period. He takes on the best, and, and he loves doing it. And that's why you have to rate Errol Spence in the, the top five, probably, pound for pound best in the world. And that's why okay. we should get a Terrence Crawford and uh, Errol Spence because they're the best pound for pound. Well, listen, they're the best one and two pound for pound welterweights in the world. You can't say pound for pound because pound for pound means everything, but they're the two best welterweights in the world without question. Nobody will argue the fact that the two best welterweights in the world are Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence. That is non-negotiable. Let's, let's talk in um, terms of if the other side happens. Let's say Danny Garcia actually beats Errol Spence. 2021... I do we want to then see Terrence Crawford and Danny Garcia? 100%. Okay. Danny Garcia is also, a, a, he's a hit. The guy is a big ratings guy too because he's been around. He's fought the best out there as well. So I think that's a, so that's, that's what's good for Terrence Crawford right now because no matter who wins that fight, that's a big fight for him. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you that the winner of that fight should fight Terrence Crawford. Regardless of who it is, I do still believe that um, Errol Spence will beat Danny Garcia. I just don't believe he will beat him like we thought he would originally. But I'll tell you one thing about Danny Garcia is I learned a long time ago to stop picking against him mm. because he's pulled off more upsets, in my opinion, than most anybody out there right now. The guy just knows how to win. He's not the most talented fighter out there, but he knows how to win. And that's, like, and that's all you need in the pros. You know how to win. He knows how to win. From a stylistic matchup, if you're Terrence Crawford, if you're his camp, styles make fights, who do you prefer, Errol Spence or Danny Garcia? Well, I think that Terrence Crawford has such an adaptable style that mm -hmm. he would be okay with either one. However, I think that the Danny Garcia fight actually would be super exciting because Danny Garcia... Um, he leaves himself open sometimes because he goes for the knockout and he throws big looping punches. But when they land, they do damage. So with that being said is if he lands one of those on Crawford, it could do damage. However, if he misses one of those, Crawford will make him pay and we could see some fireworks, meaning we could see a knockout yeah. in that one. I think if Danny Garcia and Errol Spence fight, it's, there's not going to be a knockout. I do not see a knockout in that fight because they're both 
elite, elite. Just like when people were talking about Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather. They're like, oh my God, this is going to be an awesome fight. I was like, listen, guys. For me, as a tech, tactician, boxer, that I was a great it. fight yeah, for absolutely. me. Absolutely. But I told everybody. I said it on the radio, too. I said, guys, listen. If you're the average fan, you, you're crazy if you think this is going to be an exciting fight for you. It's not. It's going to be a very tactical fight. Mayweather's a counterpuncher. He's going to make... Manny Pacquiao miss a lot. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be a knockout because it's hard to knock out Pacquiao unless you're Juan Marquez, but it's very difficult to knock out a Manny Pacquiao. It's even more difficult to knock out a guy like Mayweather who's not only never been knocked out, he's never been beaten. So that fight, it, it was exciting to me, but it was very boring for the average fan, and people complained after that fight. They were like, yeah. oh, it was so but boring. You, you get that so across the spectrum. You what get I that. want to tell everybody is that Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford won't be boring I think it'll be more exciting than the Pacquiao uh, Mayweather fight, but it's going to be on par with that level. Okay, so you think if it's an average fan sort of thing, watch Terrence Crawford, Danny Garcia, you're probably going to way excite, more exciting. But but for the I don't know, what word did you use there? Tactician. Tactician. Wow, that's pretty good. So Errol Spence. What? I'm not allowed to use big words because I'm a boxer. Exactly. You're not a uh, school smart. Cancel culture. You're getting canceled. School smart. I have college experience. Okay. I have. About 100 college hours in my, under wow. my belt. How many hours does it take? 120. Why don't you just finish that? I guess it doesn't. Honestly, in today's Why? day and age, you really don't need Exactly. To. I'm uh, already in debt up to my eyeballs. Hey, Biden, by the way, since you're our projected president, why don't you forgive my college loan? I'll well, take it. Listen, maybe. Because I still owe money on college. Maybe. On a degree that I don't have. Maybe Bernie will run the Treasury Department, and then that will happen. Let's, let's keep Let's keep talking about We've boxing because this can no go politics, really bad. So let's keep going that way. All right. So um, I'm, I'm not asking for a prediction because that's coming in, in two weeks. Uh, on I, what? On Errol Spence, Danny Garcia. I see the way you're leaning, and, and I see the way that the stars are aligning for this Lean thing. Lean with me, rock with me. Okay. I'm just curious as to how it rocks uh, the promoters if Garcia is the one who is the victor. And then to me – as kind of, I have like one foot in the world, right? It's not as marketable. If Garcia me. wins, yes. Oh, you know, but see, that's where I, I, I think the promoters have a dream match right now because Danny Garcia is marketable because they've already put him in with big names. He's already been in big time fights, and I believe he's been in pay per view fights already. So, well, I'm saying to draw the casual watcher. I know the casual watcher. Funny enough, knows Danny Garcia more than they even know Errol Spence. That's why they picked Errol Spence. Errol Spence and them are, that's why Errol Spence picked Danny Garcia. They know, that camp knows that yeah. Danny Garcia is a big draw. He is. No, I think, listen. And his I, wins or losses no, is I a think, big draw. I think that fight's going to be a great fight. I think that's going to be a better fight than what we just saw on Saturday. I think it's going to be more entertaining, for sure. It will be for the very reasons that I said that Danny yeah. Garcia goes for it. Yeah. His dad is a ratings hit, too. I just, Danny Garcia's dad is a ratings okay. hit. Okay, I was just thinking on the next uh, event, not just the one on December 5th, but when we look into 2021 yeah. from a marketing standpoint, I just hope they do a better job. Really, I, I, I hope they do. Because yeah. you know what? It can't just, you can't give loose promotion and have everything on ESPN and call it a day. You can't. You can't. Yeah, I mean, it's if you're tough. telling me that these are, so in my, obviously these three must be three of the top welterweights in the world. Two of them, you mentioned on the top five of your pound for pound. They are Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. I think that's, yeah. that's non-negotiable, I feel like. So, so why, I'm, maybe I'm just on a soapbox of sorts. You are more in the boxing world than I am, other than the fact that we are on this podcast together. I watch it, whatever else. But you are obviously in tune with the people and whatever. I'm looking at it from a sports fan, and I'm like, why am I not seeing this promoted? No, I mean, you, and honestly, at the end of the day, to be completely honest, your opinion is one that matters the most. Because... True boxing fans will tune in no matter what. Guys like you that we catch their attention, mm -hmm. those are the guys that pay the bills. Those are the guys that make fighters great. And, Meaning and, you are the ones we need because true boxing fans are going to tune in regardless. Right, right. So your opinion matters more than anything, actually. So I, I do appreciate and that. And then I think it's, it's going to matter of then placement. It's a placement on the calendar because then you start actually having these other sports taking yeah. eyeballs away. So it depends on when they would place this fight between Terrence Crawford and either Errol Spencer or Danny Garcia, where it would go in the calendar. Because then you're also talking 
not, like Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua is not going to require much. No, because it's a big fight, yeah. It's a big fight. That's a Tyson Fury is a personality. Maybe Anthony Joshua not as much, but yeah, a lot too. That guy's mass. He's he's commercial. Yes, but I, I would. It, it would be hard to argue against me here. Tyson Fury is a bit more commercial, and he sells himself really easily. Well, this is where Tyson Fury made the smartest move of his entire career. Came to America. Okay. The one time Anthony and Anthony Joshua yep. knew that that's the move. As much as fault as you guys want to give America, nobody in the entertainment world, in the sporting world, makes it massive in boxing at least in until boxing. you come to America. Yeah, like for like overseas, their soccer is what's going to be king. Yes, one hundred percent. But America Football. is where it's at. So yeah. what I say about that is Anthony Joshua knows that his promoter knows that they came to Madison Square Garden. And that was supposed to be his coming out party. Mm -hmm. And guess what happened? Yeah. Anthony Joshua yeah. lost to Andy Rez. Yeah. Got one of the biggest upsets of the year. Yeah. Maybe of all time even. But so with that being said is I do believe though that Anthony Joshua is more commercial than a Tyson Fury. However, hmm. Tyson Fury came to America and won. He captured the American hearts. He captured the American emotions. Rightfully so. I don't think it was false. I think it's right captured my heart and that's yeah. very hard to do and he yeah. did it i am a huge tyson fury fan yeah i am on record about three no it was about four or five years ago when he fought klitschko i'm on record on the radio saying this is the worst fight i've ever seen i can't watch tyson fury fight because he's boring he's just it's i can't well, i get anxiety because he, he changed his whole well, style though he checks a lot of boxes it's he's the comeback story yeah he is the against all odds story he is, I mean, you hear him talk, and, and don't give me, Americans love an accent. They love an accent. This is true. They, this, this is, is very true. true, very marketable. Very true. And he's obviously talented. But Anthony Joshua has an accent. Yes, I understand Good that looking, too. Good-looking, handsome. But my point overall, no. my point overall for 2021 is that, that you're not going to need help carrying that fight from a marketing standpoint. Zero. That Zero. fight carries itself um, because it's two of the top, it's two of the best. But yeah, yeah. If, if we're talking uh, Teofimo and whoever else, I mean, that's going to slowly kind of start to build itself as well because we talked bracketology last week where that's kind of building love. to something, right? Yeah. Um, you know what the experts say, though? And I don't always agree with it, but I disgruntledly do agree with it is that they always say boxing goes. With the heavyweights. It comes and goes sure. with the heavyweights. But the reason why I disagree with it is because the heavyweights were crap during Mayweather's reign. Yes. And Mayweather and Delahoy alone carried boxing. And you know the two highest grossing, or maybe three now, highest grossing boxing pay-per-views of all time were non-heavyweight fights. Mm -hmm. It was Mayweather sure. Pacquiao, Mayweather Conor McGregor, Mayweather Oscar De La Hoya. Yeah. So the fact is that I don't necessarily believe that, but what happens is although we're not a big fan of the mass media, but the media usually jumps on board when there's a yeah. heavyweight in the division, and they do. They help promote. Yeah, so I think if I, if I am matchmaking, which I have never done, and I'm looking at the calendar. But I, I would like you to. I'm thinking you don't need – you won't have, to have it anyways because Anthony Josh was fighting in December, which it looks like Tyson Fury Pulev. is not – Yep. Okay. So originally Tyson Fury was, but now he's saying he's not. You want that midway through the year around July fourth. Two guys that aren't American. Oh God, that'd be so, from Britain. Fighting on July fourth. Of all places. Of but all. I could see Tyson Fury with his uh, with his American shorts and all that stuff. His Apollo Creed outfit. Big fight. Now you need something in the beginning part of the year. Now, obviously, it's going to be too, too uh, soon for Terrence Crawford uh, against either Errol Spencer or Danny Garcia. Teofimo is coming off of an injury as well that, that he had a surgery for. So, I don't know. Something's got a wedge in there. It might be one of these old fight. Well, I say old. Old? What old? But maybe De La Hoya or somebody finally putting something on the calendar. Yeah, because De La Hoya has announced a comeback, but he hasn't yeah. actually. Because as of right now, we're looking at Canelo possibly at the end of December. Yeah, actually, that is rumored, so that's a very, very, very good point. Canelo, he has settled his lawsuit with Golden Boy and DAZN, mm -hmm. and now he is, it's projected, we know how projections are, he's projected to fight um, 
I believe that they've announced that December 18th, 19th, or 20th is the time frame they're looking for, which would be just before Christmas, which, if I'm being honest, that would be such an early Christmas, Christmas present. for all of us because yeah. I would Kwanzaa. love it. Because the one reason that I would love it even more is, one, I want to see Canelo in the ring because mm-hmm. Canelo is, in my opinion, he's on the top. He's two, in my opinion. He will be the bigger, he's two biggest pound draw pound. in the boxing world right now. He's the biggest draw. And he's also my number two pound for pound best in the world mm-hmm. behind Terrence Crawford. Mm-hmm. However, I want to see him fight. But also, I have an, a second reason why I want him to fight is because I have a fighter that I train, a woman fighter, that could possibly be on that undercard because Ryan Garcia was scheduled to fight December 5th, got postponed because of the stupid COVID virus. Luke Campbell got COVID. Luke uh, Campbell got COVID, mm-hmm. but they didn't cancel the fight. Luke, Luke Campbell was like, hey, let's just postpone it because I'll, I'll be ready soon. And they were like, well, maybe a couple weeks and put him on the wait, wait, wait. Canelo fight. You're telling me if somebody that's healthy and in great shape, more often than not, if they get coronavirus, they're better two weeks after that? Well, I'm actually wondering, Brandon, that hopefully they tested him multiple times because, as we know... Elon Musk was tested four times. Two of the tests came back negative, two came back positive. And let's be clear, too, there's been a boxer, a woman boxer this year, Michaela Mayer, who flew out to Cal- or to New York, took a coronavirus test, flunked it, left a day later, took another one and passed it, but they already canceled her fight. So who knows if Luke well, Campbell actually had it because he wasn't sick. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, that's the point. Is that If Luke Campbell was actually sick, like some, a lot of people get sick. I understand that. They get like yeah. really bad. It affects people. Di- it's a virus, but so if, it affects people differently. If that was really hitting Luke Campbell like that, they would not be postponing until two weeks after December 5th. Exactly. And that was based on yeah. his, he said that yeah. too. So, so we're looking at a situation where possibly December 18th, 19th, or 20th, you got Canelo possibly fighting, and then possibly his boy, Ryan Garcia, being on that card, and then possibly weighing in with Travis Hartman, My. filming and shooting as well. Can you guys imagine? From that card. Can you imagine B from Money? Cali. B Money and Weekend Trav? No, this actually, Canelo's rumored to fight in Texas. Oh, this is Texas, right? San That's Antonio, right. My bad. because they're talking about having live live fans. San Antonio. So, San Antonio, it's te- either San Antonio at the Alamo Dome or I think ATT Stadium, which is my favorite because the Dallas Cowboys play there. So, I hope Listen, that it's there, Brandon. That would I, be amazing. You know how many times the Packers have won there? I love it too. <laughs> do you know how many times? But listen, to be fair, do you know how many times every other team in the whole world has won there? A lot. Thank a you. Lot. So that would be interesting. I would love if that works out. And listen, the, uh, the boxing gods, I think, are starting to make that happen because we mentioned last week, December 5th, I hope you have several TVs because there's a lot going on. Now there's there, nothing. There's only one. Well, for sure there's one. <laughs> there's only Errol Spence and Danny Garcia because Tyson Fury appears that he's not fighting December 5th against. Who, whatever guy. Yeah, we uh, don't. It doesn't matter now. Yeah, whatever guy doesn't matter. Sorry uh, if you're listening. And then obviously Ryan Garcia is pushed off because of uh, Luke Campbell getting uh, COVID. So it feels like everything's pushing to this date on that weekend, the 18th, 19th, or 20th. So let's Book hope it happens. now. Listen, Brandon. Be money. Be money. If that happens, we are taking Wayne with Travis Harmon on the road for one of the biggest fights of our early podcast history. We're taking Texas by storm. Conservatives are going to Texas. Well, they're already there. Uh, It's a red state. So uh, that will be interesting. I don't know how we got to that point. I know we've been kind of talking in circles. I know I was talking junk about marketing as if I know anything about marketing for boxing. I don't. First of all, you know Um, a little bit about marketing because you are a financial advisor and you are know how to keep your clients happy well, that's marketing well, no, Brandon. I, just, I have to i have to market but that's marketing our, i have to market our, our practice i get that there you it's, go. it's a different realm though it is but it's similar but as in, a sports fan as a sports fan i know certain things always show up on my tv on my feed espn app all these websites and it usually and i look for boxing stuff i have obviously have to have some knowledge base we're doing this podcast so i'm doing google analytics knows what i'm looking at and it's still not being marketed appropriately. It isn't. I'm, we're still talking about LeBron and the Lakers, even though the NBA is over until Christmas. First we're still, all, we're still first talking of all, who's about who's we? Because I haven't talked about LeBron and the Lakers 
in a long no, time. I mean, I mean, we is in the sense of what's been marketed towards my eyeballs, right? Because that's Google, and we all know that they're very, 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 very liberal. But you would think ESPN would have been promoting this app, the ESPN app. That was uh, trap B. <laughs> that was a uh, weekend drafts computer. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, actually. Know. So, uh, anyway, so you would think by me going into the ESPN app that they should have been pushing this thing because it was on their stupid channel. I know. I, I, listen, that's – I mean, maybe for all we know, Terrence Crawford is a conservative Dude, and no, they're well, shadow banning him. Let me give you, let me give you the worst – and this may, might be a complaint to the, the app people or whoever. Saturday night, I was just trying to get some updates on how the card's going. Mm-hmm. I go on the ESPN app on my phone. I'm like, I don't see any but college football scores here Ugh. for, you know, BFE University playing against this. So I actually have to search for boxing as a sport. All it's showing me are articles about Errol, or not Errol Smith, about Terrence Crawford and some others. It wasn't like, hey, scorecard, yeah. here's this, here's yeah. this. It was their own show. I know. I know. You're, so... That's but UFC, they bend over for UFC. You can find every little highlight going on for every match going on for the UFC. Which is actually surprising because uh, Dana White is a hardcore conservative and Trump supporter. I don't think it has anything to do with politics. I, think I don't know, Brandon. Do, no, I think it has to do with the fact he, that... I think he, he's an alpha. No, stop. He gets stuff done. He, he contacts ESP and says, ESPN, you better play my stuff or I will come and fight you. What it has to do is the fact they are the dropping the ball. They are. ESPN is dropping the ball. Well, you know why? Because well, well, tell me. No, 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 no. No, before you get into, it, you tell me why. I wasn't political, but give me your assessment when you turned it on on ten at ten p.m. to watch the two fights. Yeah. What happened at ten p.m.? Um, there was a college football game on. Uh, between who? It was, I think it was Florida. I think. And no, I'm positive. It was it, a blow. It was either a it was a blowout. It was a blowout. It was a blowout. The game was over. And they still finished it out. The fights were supposed to start at 10. I don't think the fights didn't start until like 11. It was sad. And it was a fight, or it was a, a game that was a blowout. It was. It was sad to me. But here's the deal, though, because there's a lot of legal ram- ramifications sure, there because you know college football pays the bills. Yes, I get it. And college football was originally supposed to be canceled. So you know that in their contract with the ESPN, college football probably has something in their contract, a stipulation that says, you can't cut away. we know that there's time, you can't cut away, which is probably what happened. But but this is where I'm going to knock boxing is because, and I'm going to give UFC credit, is Dana White, for the most part, is still young, hungry, and is just on the ball with everything. Meaning Bob Arum is the guy who's top-ranked promoter, who founded Top Rank, He's been promoting since Muhammad Ali. So that's all. Bob Arum is in his 80s, okay? So what needs to happen, Brandon, what I mean by this is that Bob Arum's not on ESPN's butt. And I'm sure no. I'm sure Dana White is. And to his credit, I've, I've said this for a long time, I actually don't get along with Dana White. Or he blocked you on Twitter. I'm, he blocked me on Twitter, and I'm still blocked, by the way, Dana Unblock me, bro. Like, really? You block me? Like, come on. But anyway, he's blocked me on Twitter. But I'm going to give him credit because he's an evil genius. Mm-hmm. One, he's young, hungry, wants to promote his brand. And he's doing a great job. Even though boxing still overtakes MMA and UFC on the ratings. They do. They just do. Sure. But it's popular, though. You would be crazy if you tried to tell me that UFC is not popular. It is. You know it is. It's popular. So Dana White's doing good, and Dana White has a contract with ESPN. Bob Arum has a contract with ESPN. But what I think is happening is, Bob, I love you, and you have given boxing great fights for the many years you've been around, but I think it's time that either you hire – I know you have younger people in your your stable of top rank, but you guys need to be more of a young, hungry face – in boxing because you're not you're just doing the bare minimum and what you're saying brandon as the average fan terrence crawford's not getting marketed right he needs to be in our faces because he's a likable guy too and he's a competitive guy and he's a guy that needs to be out there and he needs to be heard and he's not being heard let me let me ask you because i didn't see that for that that stretch at 10 o'clock for what like 20 minutes or whatever were they at least cutting back and forth no 
That is insane. They delayed the they delayed the boxing. But they should have been cutting back and forth like they the locker room stuff. They didn't even say there was literally it was the worst oh, you know how many people honestly, let's be honest, a lot of working class people do not stay up till 11 p.m. to watch a boxing match. Yeah. They don't because most boxing matches are 6:30, sure. 7 at the latest. So when you delayed the match so long, like Terrence Crawford didn't get over until, dude, I, I forget actually, but it was after midnight by the time he got over. He felt bad. That's when he's like, fourth round, I'm, it's out. Yeah, I'm he's done. like, he's like, my fans need to get this over with now. But see, that, so that is, that's what I'm talking about, this dropping the ball of the marketing side, especially with ESPN. Are you kidding me? You're still, it, t, 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 whatever it is, I know you're laying off employees. I know like you've, you've dropped in ratings, whatever else, but you're still. How have you dropped in ratings when people are at home now more than ever? Well, my point is that you're still basically what's known as the top sports network in the world. I think they're the only sports network in the got, United States, though. You've, Fox Sports does a very good job. I, I, I'm, you know, but anyways, that's a different topic. Well, they do. No, I'd say the ratings are going down, though. Well, everyone's ratings are, evidently. I don't so, know but, how. What are you doing? But when you look at it, if you're ESPN and you have a blowout football game, I get it, you've got to finish it because that's in the contract, you've got to be cutting away. And football has so many breaks, so many breaks. And I'm a huge yeah, football but- fan. But there are times where you could have split screen and say, hey, this is what's going on in the locker room. We're waiting for yada yada to finish. And then we're going to be coming to you live with – I think it was Josh Franco and Andrew Maloney. Yeah. Sure. I mean, you, you probably could have split screen that fight. Even. There's a way to blend it in. So then you get the football and it's like, oh, I'll keep the TV on. I'll watch that. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to 100% agree with you on that one. Actually. Well, good. I'm going to give that to you. That, Thank you're you. right. I, they could have done it. And with the technology nowadays, you could have done a split if screen. If I'm Bob Arum, I got to be up there, but about that. Yeah, but he probably wasn't. But, Bob, so. Bob, Bob Arum is, 80 plus or years his old. Team, fine, not him, but his team. It's not just him. No, he, he's obviously got it. But, I mean, Bob Arum's the figure, though. Bob Arum was in the post-fight interview. Sure. He was with Terrence Crawford. But there are... And there he are, was actually giving a pretty good speech, There are minions though. that are, you know, responsible for the network coverage of things. Somebody got pushed around by ESPN and, I don't know if it was SEC football. Even, but not even was. pushed around because I don't even know if anybody was pushing back at all or pushing in general for boxing. I just think there was a, a great way to capitalize on even more eyeballs. Staying on ESPN, number one, watching all their advertisements, number two, but also transitioning from football to watching some boxing. Because yeah. if you watched that, well, now it might not have been the, the best setup because you, you had this uh, Franco and Maloney fight, and it was a controversial ending, I guess. Very. Uh, Ended up having a 26 minute delay. But then that also couldn't might, you have split screen that? But then that might have also given a little more color for like the average sports fan. Like, huh? Oh, I thought it was just a bunch of guys hitting each other for 10 or 12 rounds. Instead, there was like, oh, okay. Well, wait a minute. And, they, and then you would actually have an emotional draw to. No way, there wasn't a headbutt there, or no, there was something. You have storyline. So much when it comes to sports. And we should know this because there's so many writers out there that get paid for doing this stuff. Sports is story. If you could tell the story right, you have more people watching and paying attention. And thus, the revenue dollars come in from a marketing standpoint. Everyone wins. They dropped the ball on this big time. See, that's why B Money is probably one of the best financial advisors around. Because you talk about revenue and if it... I have, I, have a, I have a lovely quote, Brandon, that I feel like you should use for your clients, but if it doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense, okay? Because it's true. When it comes to boxing, that's how I look at it as a pro, from the promoting side because I've done promoting. I'm a current boxer as well. So well, that's, from the promoter side is my, if it doesn't make – My actual make, motto right now for our business is if it doesn't make a dollar, give me a holla. Would that be better? <laughs> that's pretty good though. I'm too. just kidding. That's I'm pretty kidding. good though. If it doesn't make a dollar, give me a holla. But like – if it, you if you're a client of yours, yeah. you're making a dollar. So oh, don't yeah. give me a holler. So you're like, don't holler at me because I already got no, you. No, but if you're I not a, you. if you're not a client, then if you're not a client, I mean, you might as well just let me. Like, no, you have should a tell your clients. Listen, guys, if it doesn't make what what was my quote again? I already missed it. If it, it doesn't up. make dollars, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. yeah. So you should tell clients to bring them in. Hey, your current financial advisors. If it, if it's not making dollars, it ain't making sense. Come on over. I'm gonna make Golf it. Stream I'm, financial. I'm gonna make it a point. To use that in a conversation this week, and I'm really going to so, tell you how it goes. I really hope if it doesn't. I bet. I bet guys sit back and they go. 
I kind of like that. Hmm. That's my prediction. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm giving it to you. That. We're on record. It's forever on the internet. I can't take this back. That's what I love about this, though. We can't take it back because it's out there. Yeah. So I Which like you it. you were apprehensive it. for a few weeks. And I was like, no, no, I no. Was. In the early days, I'm like, no, no, no. Let's just put it. Probably like the, the first out. multiple episodes I was. Well, because we didn't really make, promote this thing. This is, okay. We still have it. Hold on. It's episode 20. This is organic. It's we episode, still have it. Yeah. It's episode 20, so we could talk about the history a little bit. For like four weeks. We didn't tell anybody we were doing this. Nope, we were just posting. And then, I, and then I got impatient with you, and I'm like, dude, uh, we just need to have it on somewhere so that when we have yep. an episode that we actually like, we can say, hey, we've been doing this for a few weeks. Listen to our old stuff. Now, if you're out there on YouTube or Spotify, you can see all of our old stuff, iTunes everywhere. You can see all the old stuff. Trust me, the first few weeks are pretty raw. They're not very good. I think they're amazing, but yeah. Well, because we're on the inside looking out. But... Even if you're looking at this episode and you're like, well, that's not very good either. Trust me, it was, it was a little more rough. First of all, this is great. We're making podta- podcast, pff, podcast great again. We are. Pod- America. A- pod- MPGA? Nah, it doesn't work for initials. It doesn't work good. Because no. you can't say like MAGA. You can't from m- gaga. Making pod- m- MPAGA. No, wait. Making podcasts. We can't. Right? No, M- P- doesn't work. It doesn't, doesn't work. Exactly. It doesn't work. Um, where were we at? I forgot. I don't know. See, this guy for the past few weeks, it, it bothered. Wow, look at that. After, look at that. Oh my. Oh my. Definition. Carnivore look diet. At this. Carnivore diet. Spotify, you cannot see this. So if you're listening to us on Spotify, please subscribe to our YouTube channel because if you could see what Brandon was doing right now, oh my ladies. Wow. I mean, oh my gosh. Wow. I mean, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. So carnivore diet, I'm almost done with it. I'm yeah, how, how's that going? Going Give good. Us an update. I'm down 17 pounds. Once again, that's not the goal. My, my goal Never is was the goal. mental focus, my brain fog going away, being re-energized in the gym, things like that. Uh, I'm still struggling a little bit in the gym. That's because my, my lifting partner has, has flaked out recently. So that's tough for me. I need accountability. But overall, mentally and spiritually connected, that stuff has been working. Weight-wise is an added benefit. So what I have to do now, weekend, Trav, is that... Uh, I have a, uh, this is the final week and I'm slowly starting to convert into keto, okay. which, uh, you know, you can read up on it. It's still very, it's a extremely low carb situation, but for my macros, I have to intake a lot of fat as well and proteins and yada, yada. Um, so I'm slowly implementing things last yesterday. I was so excited. I had a cup of kale, a cup of kale on top of all the meat I had for the day. Actually, I'm I'm talking smack here, but I love kale. Well, yeah, it's not, and I don't mind kale at all. But I, but that was your dessert, pretty much. Well, so I had it. I, I made it I a steak. Kale. I made a steak salad with this kale, and so I cut up egg. So you had a meat salad. I had a meat salad. <laughs> yeah, there was like nothing else on it. It was just the kale, the steak, and I cut up a hard boiled egg. You had some tube steak. I didn't have to stop. It. <laughs> Stop it. This is PG-13. Nobody knows what that means. Meat salad is not anything terrible. It should be. It should be. (laughs) Everything that comes out of your mouth seems to be terrible. That's what she said. Um, So, no, it is going well. It's going well. I'm very happy with the results, but I'm also looking forward to having a a more more diverse cookbook. But on a serious note, I have seen a massive difference in you, and I appreciate it. But last week, you were actually very, like, calorie deficient and weak. I was not a fan. Me either, but the and episode I, turned out okay. It did turn okay, but the fans didn't think it turned out okay. No, how do we? We had a massive al- algorithm drop. Is weird. No. We had our best episode, 18, yeah. 19, fell flat on its face. Is this like normal? Yeah. Stupid, freaking. Okay, so. 20? B money. This is going to be a test because so far our most viewed, now I don't know about the Spotify numbers, but the YouTube numbers, the most viewed was the first time I put that behind me b b money money. sorry spotify listeners i have uh, the words b money behind my head it's on the wall it is now literally that was two weeks ago last week's episode it was gone weekend trap took it down because his clients evidently were questioning what that is while they had their their training sessions in the gym and what happened our episode the numbers dwindled back to average it dropped I did. So, so this will be a good test. It is. I like it. This will be a good test to see if we pop back up in the hundreds like we were. We'll one day get to the thousands and the millions. Listen, you... Trillions. I want to tell you. Is it, 
Listen, I, I'm a visionary. I'm a little crazy. I like it. I come from a small town. I was not supposed to do much at all. No. And I, I'm not even close to being where I want to be, for sure. But we're headed there. But my expectations mm. of this podcast are high. Good. Like. Good. Super high. Good. And that's like, why I push you. We high, high. That's why I push you. We make sure that we, for you all as well, for the general public listening to us, we are here weekly. We haven't missed a beat. 20 Not weeks. One. 20 weeks straight. We have perfect attendance. And we have lives. Like, I have a family. I have a life. Travis, same thing. Life, he, he has a, a life. Career, everything. He's traveling a lot. I, I have a business. He has a business. We're all busy, right? But we make time. Uh, but we make time. And we have a good time together. And we talk boxing and whatever else comes to mind. Drink a lot of good bourbon. 20 straight weeks. And I push you on purpose because, number one, I think it's good for those that, that follow us to hear your thoughts throughout the week as well when it comes to big matchups coming up. What are the predictions, right? We talk about updates and fights. For instance, Ryan Garcia get moved back, or we talk about this or that. So if you're following, that's not on Spotify. That's not on the, the other audio channels. But when you're looking at YouTube and our Facebook and our Instagram, we're updating all week long. We, we have so, if you go to our YouTube channel, we have a lot of content, yeah. not just our episodes. We have a lot of content of our predictions of Brandon even records some predictions. Well, I did it for you. That way. <laughs> Man, I was smooth. But you still did. You were it smooth, It was smooth bro. as butter. It was so, bro, it was so smooth. Well, listen, I have a nice, I have a nice, sultry voice. Listen, Brandon does have a good voice. Mm. He's got the perfect voice for podcasts. Thank you. You also have a face for TV, though. You don't have a face oh, for wow. radio. Well, I, that's, a, that's a good compliment, too. This is actually my worst side, too, and I... I I give you the luxury of the other wow, side because I don't know if mine would be any better or worse on either side. My I think beard, mine's just the same. My beard equal. My beard fills in better on this side first. Does it? You know what? I feel like you're probably right because I feel like my left side of my beard comes in better than my right. I mean, it looks the same. For those that don't, I mean, but I'm, I feel like I'm 15 days into the Movember thing. You are minus 15 days in it. Sorry, guys. So uh, men's health awareness, uh, still raising awareness to that end. But you um, shaved your head at the same time, too. Is that the I same thing? I always do. I shave my head like every six days. You do? Mm-hmm. Actually, this is eight days, but yeah. I always remember it about like that. Well, that's because when you see me, it's already grown out. So that's like right now, this, every this is about as long as it's going to be. Hmm. I like it, though. Thank you. I Looks like, pretty good. I like it, too. And your beard's coming back in? Yep. Can... And I've raised money, and I've raised money and awareness for men's, men's health. health. Because you're a good person like that. But the question is, are you going to keep growing your beard out so we can be beard brothers oh, yeah. again? No. Because you know what I think the next thing, the next step is? We need a beard sponsorship. Ooh, okay. Yeah. So our media partners now, we have three. Okay. I believe we need to add on a beard media sponsor. There's a few different organizations I follow, uh, but... That's interesting. They should I, follow us. Because trust me, and I try to get Travis on board with the proper product. Because this beard is long enough where you need to treat it right. It is. You have to have a certain beard wash, maybe used twice a week. It is. Uh, you have to have a nice brush. He has a brush over there, which works out pretty good. Oh, yeah. I do. But you have to treat. Look at that. Yeah. Don't laugh at me. I actually, I actually use this every day. Don't laugh at me. I have a, a $250 beard brush. I got this for Probably. the present for Christmas, yeah. and I don't think it was that much. Yeah, sorry. Mine's from England. It's like it's a whole thing. Anyways. This is from England, though, too. Yeah. I actually got a beard wash and this brush. Yeah. So it was expensive, but not like crazy expensive. I know we're, running, we're starting to run long here, which is cool. But you have That's to treat said. that right. Just like, you know, when women, you know, longer hair, you put different product in. You treat it differently. You don't wash it every day. There's a whole process, right? So there's a whole process to the beard as well because you have different oils and things that, you know. Anyways, this could be a whole beard podcast for all I know. That, like, that's Beard, men, that's bourbon, boxing. The three Bs. Oh, my. Did you just make something happen? Marketing and producing. You just made something happen. Marketing and producing. Beard. Bourbon. Bourbon. Boxing. We might be changing. And our, be money. And be, we might be changing our name. Uh-oh. Probably not. There's too many. I do like it, though. We'd have to change so much. I might change the info description. There you go. The three Bs. Because it used to be uh, the most important podcast you'll ever hear in your life, ever. 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 
<laughs> we might be changing. Anyways, um, so here we are. Uh, we've talked a bit today uh, with regard to the Terrence Crawford matchup with Kel Brook. Took him down, fourth round, right? I, no, no, I'm not going like, crazy. I thought, I thought it was, was four. I thought it was like six. You should, mm, I feel like uh, we should know this, but no, we it was should. later. It was later. It was, okay. I know it was later than four. Well, we were talking, uh, we talked Terrence Crawford. We talked about the potential setup here as we're looking at the, I think it was six. As we're guess. looking at the welterweight division, Errol Spence, Danny Garcia here on December 5th, the lead up being four. Look at this guy. Man. Phenom- Dude, know some stuff. you know what's crazy? Yeah. On the official scorecards, mm-hmm. Terrence Crawford was, down. was losing on two of the three scorecards. Uh, 28-29, 28-29, and then 29-28 he was winning. So he, at that, but it was only four rounds. At that, well, you know what? Let me give you guys some perspective, though. Okay. Kel Brook, former world champion. Mm-hmm. He's been in with the Grays, right? Mm-hmm. He got TKO'd in the fourth round. I lasted longer with Terrence Crawford than Kel Brook. Yeah, you, you went to a decision. I lost a decision on points. Yeah. How many rounds was that? Okay. We completed four. Yeah. So I literally lasted yeah. longer than Kel Brook. Sorry, I had I have to bring that and up. And that is what she on said. On five, no- <laughs> <laughs> five days notice, by the way, training, they called me five days before that fight. Not even training, five days before. You had your chance in the show to talk about that Sorry, at the beginning. I know, I know, I apologize. I teed it up for you. Hold on a nah, second. No, it's fine. Now you've got to carry it. We're about done. You don't want to, okay, we're fine, because we're, we're going home, right? All right, so. Bring it home. So we talked about, uh, obviously, that big matchup this past weekend and the lead-up, what what 2021 could look like. I think that's kind of the theme. We've talked for the past few weeks about 2021 really taking this fourth quarter of 2020 uh, for boxing and stretching out to the next year. This is such a good time for the sport, for fans, for boxers themselves, uh, for the promoters, things like that. As fans start to re-enter buildings, capacities, depending on the state, um, this is such a good stretch for boxing coming up and other sports and other, um, you know, MMA, things like that. But boxing is on a tear. Um, you know, it's, you know, we have Tyson Jones Jr., which we haven't given the proper amount of time to because we're waiting till next week's episode. That's going to be a majority of what we talk about is uh, Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. fighting November 28th. That is coming up yeah. with Triller. Triller. However, it's pay-per-view. I think it's forty nine ninety five or something now. However they do pay-per-view via Triller, I don't, I don't know. know. That's a good point, actually. So we are going to be how all over that, that next week. And then obviously, who knows, if there's an update between Ryan Garcia and Luke Campbell, possibly moving to a Canelo card, maybe Canelo has a final date finally set for December, we will be updating our YouTube and Facebook pages with regard to that. But it's coming. This is a great time for boxing. And so with that, I'm just going to shut up and actually ask for final thoughts we can trap. I mean, final thoughts are my normal everyday rants about how amazing boxing is right now. Like I'm like if people has been I know there's some people out there who have been following me for a very long time and I've constantly been such a cheerleader for boxing, but genuinely, I mean this in the most genuine fashion. Boxing is on the up and up and it has been for a long time, but we have some amazing fights and Not only is the heavyweight division amazing right now, the welterweight division, which is 147 pounds, is phenomenal. Lightweight. The lightweight division is phenomenal. The middleweight, the light mid, or the the super middleweight, the light heavyweight, we have some phenomenal fights. We have some phenomenal talents. So I, I can't even stress this enough, guys. If you get a chance to tune into some boxing matches, please do. Okay? And there's only been one. As far as I know, at the end of the year, there's only been one pay-per-view fight. The rest of the fights have been for – it's not free. They, they say it's free TV, but it's – you have cable. If you have ESPN, you have CBS, you have the regular te- networks, then you can watch it, yes. But I encourage you guys, tune in because this could change your guys' lives because you have younger kids right now, the younger generation, watching all of this. We're going to produce a future champion as well from the kids that are watching this amazing era right now. I'm not going to call it. I'm not going to go crazy and call it the golden era, era, but it's a great era. It is. It's a great era. They they called the era of the welterweight division the Four Kings, and we're pretty close to that. We're pretty close to the Four Kings era right now with the welterweight division, meaning we got Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence, and a ton of other welterweights. 
And, and so if, and also, if there's something we're not talking about, if there's a fight that maybe you caught, maybe you caught on ESPN, maybe you caught on, I don't know, Showtime or whatever it is, wherever you're, wherever you're watching this stuff. PBC, Showtime, ESPN, any of those, the zone, all you, of them. You want to pick our brain, you want an opinion, ask us. We're easily contacted. YouTube's the easiest way. I reply social media you know, every time. Instagram's an easy way. Wayne in with Travis Hartman, all one word. Facebook, you can find us. Wayne in with Travis Hartman is the account. YouTube, obviously, same same concept. Wayne in with Travis Hartman, right? Triller, Wayne in, TH, a little different. A little Ooh, different. Throwing, uh, a little, throwing a little curveball. Throwing a little Triller. Um, and then also, you know, email us. I don't care. Wayne in, TH at gmail.com. We are out there. We're here for you. I say that several times, but we want to engage. We want to have conversations. Maybe you're like, you guys are stupid. Kel Brook, you know, he just got caught. I don't know. Maybe you want to say he something. He got caught multiple yeah. times. <laughs> but maybe you disagree with us, and that's awesome. We Fight want... me. Kel Brook is going to lose. Or no, Kel Brook. Errol Spence is going to lose to Terrence Crawford. Debate me. Prove me wrong because you won't. Because Terrence Crawford is 100% beating Errol Spence. And Terrence Crawford just loved a comment that I said to him. Okay. And Sorry, literally that just happened. Okay, it popped up. That's why I said it. We can trap needs to slow his roll because Errol Spence needs to get through Danny Garcia first. So with that, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Please connect with us. If you're already subscribing, thank you very much. If you have not yet, please look below, subscribe, hit the bell icon on Spotify. Thanks for the love. Everywhere we are, we are here for you. ELE, everyone love everyone. Be money. That's such a good sentiment. And, and I support it. Thank you. I appreciate the support from you as well. So with that, that there is Travis Hartman. That there is B-Money. Thank you very much for joining us. Go Pack Go. God bless. You love it. You love it. Love you.